Hi there, this is uh, part four of chapter two's lecture. This is the very last part of our lecture. This part is about geology. Geology is a study of Earth's physical features. This is just a really pretty picture, so I've put it on here. This is how we're, we're gonna learn about Earth's landscape and how the Earth has changed over time. All right, let's talk about the Earth as a whole. The, the center of our Earth is called the core, right? We have an inner and an outer core. Core is made of uh, basically solid inner core and the reason the inner core is solid is because of how much pressure how much weight is on top of it so it pretty much is smashing it together the center is the center of the earth is solid mainly iron magnetic this is what makes our earth magnetic outside of there side of that area you have the liquid outer core and this is also made out of molten metal molten iron mainly all right basically very heavy center part of our earth that gives us our magnetic pull the mantles on top of that all right, we have the mantle on top of it. This is most of Earth's mass right here. It's made of all these molten minerals like magnesium, more iron, silicon, oxygen compounds. These are what make up rocks. Rocks are made out of these compounds. It makes perfect sense because when these liquid molten rocks uh, solidify, they make rocks, and we call them silicates, which is silicon and oxygen. All right, the asthenosphere, the very top part of the upper mantle, which is what this Earth basically floats upon. All right. The crust is the lightweight upper area of the earth. Um, it's, this is showing you the crustal plates, the plates on the earth. So these are little plates, plates of rock and land. And by the way, this ocean sits on rock below it, sits on land below it. Um, the upper part of the mantle, and the cr which includes the uppermost mantle and the crust, that's the lithosphere. All right. So anything involving litho is involving rocks. And so this involves the crust, the rocky part. Um, basically most seismic activity, most things that happen on the earth involving, uh, basically movement of these plates, it's going to happen generally on, at the boundaries. So a lot of this is happening on the boundaries. Look where we're at here in California. We're on a plate boundary and we're an earthquake country. All right. Plate tectonics is a theory that explains how these, pl how these plates of earth and ocean have moved over time. It is believed that these plates, um, and they've been measured, they move about two to 15 centimeters um, per year. So they are actually moving, all right? They move and you can measure faults. They're getting bigger. You can measure the actual movement of the earth. Here in California, the Pacific plate is moving north and that is shearing across this other plates, North American plate. And that is why we're in earthquake territory right there. A divergent plate boundary. This is a boundary um, where two plates are pulling apart from each other. And when they pull apart from each other, magma comes up. And the magma dumps out. It forms what's called a ridge on each side, like a ridge of a mountain, but there isn't a peak to it. The peak is open, is basically open to the mantle. Where do these form on the earth? Well, the most important one, and you need to know this, and you need to know its location for the test, is the mid-ocean ridge. These are underwater mountains, basically. Underwater water mountains that happen all over the place. Specifically, the one we're talking here is in the Atlantic. This one's a very well-known mid-ocean ridge. You have them all over the planet. They line the planet kind of like the stitches on a baseball. But the mid-ocean ridge, you need to know where it is. It's in the middle of the ocean. And this is an area where new crust is actually being created. So since lava, or excuse me, magma comes up, and then it solidifies when it comes up, it is forming new land or new space. Basically, new rocks are, being, are forming at that, at that location. Transform plate boundary. This is the fault line in California. All right, so this is where we live. This is what it looks like right over here. What's happening? Well, two plates are shearing past each other, slipping past each other. Um, when this happens, you can build up a lot of friction when things move and you feel it as an earthquake. A convergent plate boundary. This is when two plates, two types, you can have a a, uh, a basically a land plate colliding with another land plate and this causes what's called diastrophism or a continental collision and you actually cause an uplift and a mountain forming here all right sometimes you have a less dense oceanic plate crushing into a plate that is land mass and it, it dives underneath the other one causing subduction which was when one plate dives underneath another one that's called subduction um, basically this one here 
continental collision leads to mountain ranges like the Himalayas in India, the Andes Mountains in South America. Okay, this plate, this type of collision, when one oceanic plate submerges under the other one, causing a subduction zone, can lead to what's called a volcano. So you can get magma that comes up, and you can have volcanic activity in this area, basically. All right. Here's what's important, though, about a subduction zone. You better know that subduction zones are important because I just told you at a divergent plate boundary, like the Mid-Ocean Ridge, you're forming new crust. Well, if you're forming new crust there, you need a place where you're recycling old crust, and that happens during subduction. When a plate dives underneath another one, these rocks will melt back into the mantle. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the rock cycle. Um, basically, rocks have like a life cycle, and they can get converted from one type to another type throughout this life cycle. Minerals are what we find in rocks. And minerals are found in the earth and in the soil. Plants use these minerals when they grow. We eat these minerals in our diet. This is why you need a diet full of vegetables. The plants take in the minerals from the soil. You take them into your diet, and they're, they're good for us. We need them in our diet calcium, magnesium, iron, and so on and so forth. Let's talk about the rock cycle. The rock cycle shows you here how, for example, you can start as igneous rock. An igneous rock can get turned into metamorphic rock. We'll talk about that in a second. Sedimentary rock can get turned into metamorphic rock too. Sedimentary rock, basically, it, what it's showing to you is rocks can be converted from one form to another. Sedimentary rock can basically, under heat and pressure and all that good stuff, could eventually become igneous rock. All right, excuse me, or a metamorphic rock under heat and pressure. All right, if it melts and subducts and then recools, then it can become igneous rock. So, showing you how rocks can form and turn into other rocks. All right, so let's start with igneous rock. Igneous rock basically forms when magma or lava cool. Lava is molten rock above ground, and magma is below ground. So, lava is magma above ground, basically for the most part. When these things solidify, they form rock. And that rock basically is the first type of rock we're going to talk about. Where we live here in San Diego, we even have a high school nearby called Granite Hills. This looks like a hill potentially that could have been here in San Diego. Granite is a type of what's called intrusive igneous rock. What does that mean if it's intrusive? That means it cooled below ground. All right? Cooled below ground. Extrusive igneous rock are basically rocks that were ejected like through a volcanic eruption and then they cooled and they formed a rock above ground. So if it's extrusive, it, it's an igneous rock that was formed above ground. If it's intrusive, it was formed below ground. An example of this one, intrusive would be granite. An example of extrusive would be basalt, showing the picture over here. Sediments. Sediments, basically wind and weathering and water and things can break down stone and create sediments. These sediments can build up in areas, basically. And when they build up in areas, over years they can get compacted, they start binding and sticking together, and they start crystallizing. This is called lithification. So lithification is how you compact and cement and eventually crystallize forming sedimentary rock. So any type of rock can break down and weather and be turned into a sediment, all right? So you can break down igneous rock, turn it into a sediment, and that sediment, those sediments can lithify, forming sedimentary rock, all right? So sandstone in Arizona is an example, or limestone is an example of sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rock. This is, pick any of the other types of rocks. So let's take the granite or the limestone I just mentioned. And you take these types of rock and you put them under great heat and pressure. Well, they will change. These rocks will change under great heat and pressure. Granite becomes a rock called gneiss, all right, shown here. And marble is formed from limestone that is smashed and heated together, basically. So marble is a type of metamorphic rock that is created from a type of sedimentary rock. Gneiss is a type of metamorphic rock that was created from a type of igneous rock. So all rocks can be somehow turned into the other types of rocks. Because of basically time periods, um, the, basically the Earth has been turned into different geological time periods. So periods of time that have to do with major events where we have layers, like sedimentary layers. 
I'm not going to go into this too much detail, but I want you to know our current period, which is the quaternary period, and the current epic, which is called Holocene. I would know the current era, which is called Cenozoic. And those are the three major ones I would know. I don't know if AP is going to test you on all of these other ones, but if you start seeing these words like Jurassic or Cretaceous and so on and so forth, these are, ge these are um, geological time periods. 66 million years ago, <coughs> excuse me, why is this important? Well, this is when the dinosaurs got crushed. This was when we had a major mass extinction event. So that's right here at the, at the end of the Cretaceous period, all right? Volcanoes. Basically, we just talked, they usually occur at subduction zones is where they usually occur. You need to know that Japan, basically, Japan, where is it at here? It's up in this area. Japan has a lot of vol volcanism in that area. Okay, a lot of, vol a lot of volcanoes in Japan. Right? You also need to know that there's this area. This is the Pacific. Okay, and here's another picture of it in the Pacific. It's at the edge of what's called the Pacific Plate. There's an area called the Ring of Fire. This area here at the edges of the Pacific Plate, the Ring of Fire, is where you're going to find a lot of volcanic activity. And this shows you these are all major volcanoes. And they're also earthquake areas. All right, look where we're at along this line. So this is called the Ring of Fire. This is where you're going to find volcanoes and a lot of earthquakes. All right. Hot spots are areas where there's like a there's a break in the earth and molten lava and magma is coming up through the earth the hawaiian islands or hawaii is formed as this plate moves um the hot spot doesn't move so as the plate moves you'll notice the islands are moving okay so the islands get older the farther they are from the hot spot so as currently right now the island of the island in the island the hawaiian islands the island of hawaii specifically is currently growing in size these volcanic eruptions occur all day just adding rock and the island is getting bigger as this plate moves a new island will eventually form and so on and so forth so there are this chain of islands that form as a result of being above a hot spot landslides a major big chunk of earth just falls or slides downhill what causes a landslide it's called mass wasting where you have in this case you have terrain that's probably been damaged due to, in this case, um, deforestation. And then there's a lot of rain, a lot of water, a lot of moisture. Gravity starts pulling things down. And that would lead to a major collapse in the land. And the, the mass wasting is what causes the landslide, all right? So the mass wasting is a downward gravitational movement that eventually leads to all this earth sliding down. And tsunamis, they're caused by basically any type of seismic activity, moving earth, Volcanoes eruption, huge landslides, any of these things can cause a major tsunami. You need to know that in 2011, Japan was rocked by a tsunami and it triggered, basically it was triggered by a massive earthquake off the coast and it did major damage. It damaged one of their nuclear reactors. Um, it, it knocked out the cooling, it knocked out the, its ability to cool itself. So the nuclear reactors melted down and they released a lot of radiation everywhere so this is that was a huge problem back in 2011. i'll end our lecture